Hello everyone and welcome to Country Gospel. Now you have been with us in the past, you've listened to some of our great music and some of our great testimonies that we have brought to you. And we're back again on this programme uh, again for to give you another little view. We're going to be looking today on the Old Testament. Now a lot of us can you know, bypass the Old Testament but believe me there's a lot going on in the Old Testament. A lot of instruction and a lot of help that we can get from all these old prophets. Now we're, we're going to look at one in particular. We're going to look at Malachi. Now it's the last chapter in the Old Testament, but boy, does this give us some insight to what is going on. So let's have a look at it. Maybe you have your Bibles, maybe you'd, share, you'd care to sit with me for the next few minutes and uh, share with me on this fantastic chapter. We're going to be looking particularly at chapter 3 and verse 16. But before we start that, let's have a look at Malachi himself, the prophet. Now Malachi had a rough time. He had an awful lot to take on board because he was he was kind of way working with a lot of the Israelites who had just disregarded God. They had been left out of the the, um, into the wilderness that they've been brought through all of that. They'd seen God working so much, but they just disobeyed God so, so so intensely that Malachi had such a job to try and get those guys back on board again. Now, think of the setting. The setting is just in Jerusalem. And his key, we're going to have a look at a few things. His key things were on the Israelites to try and get them back into God and into a good relationship with him. He had a few points that he tried to get and get across to them. One of them was real love. Now he tried to point out to the Israelites the hypocrisy that they had done whenever they walked away from the Lord. The, the lifestyle that they even created for themselves wasn't very, very good. And then, of course, the priests' sins came into board as well. They didn't help very much because they didn't, they didn't encourage the, the Israelites to obey God in the way that they should. And of course, it takes on board the sins that they committed as well. And the very important thing, that they forgot about the Lord's coming. But as we go through Malachi, and just go through it with me, and we, it brings us into chapter 3, where we're trying to think about today and what we're trying to focus on, and particularly verse 16. Now, there's three pointers that I can see in uh, Malachi chapter 3, and maybe you could see that with me as well. The start of that chapter really tells us the coming of judgment. I'm just going to read a few verses to you that it says, and I'm reading from the Living Bible, and if you have the King James, it will be coming a wee, a wee bit different as we read it. But let's have a look at it at the start of the chapter. And it said, this is the Lord speaking to Malachi and telling him to prepare the people of what is to come. I am sending my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord that you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant, whom you look so eagerly as surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Now, I think that's a brilliant statement. The Lord of heaven's armies is telling telling Israel, I'm coming. Are you prepared or what what are you doing? But and also goes on to say, who will be able to endure it when he comes? There's a question and a challenge right away for all of us. Who will be able to stand and face him when he appears? For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal, or like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. You know, Everything that's going on at the start of this chapter is trying to prepare us for the coming day of judgment. And you know, it's the same for us today as it was whenever Malachi was giving this to the Israelites again as well. These things were happening. This book doesn't lie. These things will happen and it takes us to be prepared. I hope that we are. But by reading God's word like this, full of instruction, full of guidance, we cannot go wrong, but it's just keeping it keeping it in our minds and in our hearts. And it calls us also to a call to repentance. And again, I'll read a few verses out of this to you again. I am the Lord and I do not change. Isn't that a fantastic statement? I am the Lord and I do not change. 
That is why your descendants of Jacob's are not already destroyed. There is God's mercy coming into play again as well. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now you return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Isn't that lovely what the Lord says, even when we've we've walked away from even the Israelites, and what is really happening in today as well, even when people have walked away from him, the Lord is still there, still there waiting and willing to give another chance to take to take us into his family once again. You see, those those first things that he says, I am the Lord and I change not. It is just amazing to have those words and to know that God is always still with us every step of the way. And it also goes on in that chapter, there's a lot of instruction that Malachi is saying to you because he goes on to say about tithes and offerings because the Israelites really, really robbed God of, of everything. They, they, they just didn't care. They gave no thought to what, the, what they should be doing. And, you know, that can happen in these days as well. You know, we, we think sometimes that, you know, when we're offering things, and it doesn't always have to be money. You know, it can be our time. It can be so much other things that we can rob God of. Oh, I have no time for to do that. Somebody maybe needs a, needs a bit of encouragement or somebody maybe needs a bit of help somewhere along the line. And we're, oh, I haven't the time to do it. I just, I just don't have the time. We're robbing God as well too of those things. And it's not good because it's not really always about money. But when we obey God whenever we're given those instructions, the, the outcome is just unbelievable. The blessing that we receive ourselves and the blessing that we can give to others. And then coming towards the end of that chapter, we've got the promise of God's, of God's mercy. And just a few um, verses of, from, from still the same chapter, chapter 3, And this is the verse 16. This is the one that we're trying to to, um, think about. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with each other and the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honour of his name. And then what what happens after that? The The Lord of heaven's army says, they will be my people. Isn't that amazing? To have that assurance in your heart to know that when you give your life to to the Lord and you honour him, he is with you. You will be his people. My goodness, it's just unbelievable what we have so much to look forward to when we put our trust in the Lord. And not only that, God recognises those who do trust him and those who put their trust in him. He knows that. And he has prepared that for us whenever time comes, when he comes back and we are whatever we're taking home in between times. God has prepared a way and a home for us that is way beyond all that we can ever imagine or ever even think. And you see, once we give our lives to him, our lives are immediately put in his in the, in the book of remembrance. God remembers every one of us once we have given our lives to him. Imagine having that assurance, knowing that whatever you have to face each day of your life, no matter what it may be, knowing that your day is already planned when you have the Lord in your life. I just think that's amazing. Because these days that we're living in are not good days. We don't know what we're going to face each day. We don't know what lies ahead. But when God is in control, We've got nothing to fear. We've nothing to fear when Jesus is near. So maybe in your times, we're coming just to the end of this little talk. I do hope that you have enjoyed it and maybe you'll tune in again. We'll maybe be doing more of these or listen to the music that we have ongoing constantly. So maybe in your own time, you'll get the book, you'll get your Bible out and have a look at Malachi. It's the very last chapter that's in the Old Testament, but there's so much in it. And so much more to be instructed by and to see what God has planned for us. But for now, thank you so much for listening to us. I do hope you've enjoyed the programme. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.